Hallelujah. Stand to your feet tonight. Lift your hands to heaven. Hallelujah. We serve a mighty God, a God of miracles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless you tonight, Lord. You are so great, and your mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. It is an honor and it's a privilege to come into your house tonight. As David said, I was glad when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Another translation said they rejoiced. Hallelujah. Is there any rejoicers in the house tonight? Is there anybody that's so full of joy? It's just coming out of you. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So grateful, so thankful. Hallelujah. So good. We serve a great and mighty God. Amen. He's for us, never against us. He's healed us. Hallelujah. He's freed us. He's delivered us. Glory, glory, glory. Every chain that the devil had has been destroyed by Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 The devil cannot put that back together again. Hallelujah. But he gives us opportunity. He gives us opportunity to pick that up and get chained back with it. But my goodness. He gave us a mind, and we're too smart for that, aren't we, congregation? We're too smart for that. Hallelujah. We're not picking that up. We're not picking up any of the devices that the devil may have. No, 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 no. We're going to stay on the victory side. Hallelujah. We're going to walk in the provision that Jesus paid and gave his life for. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to stay on the side of righteousness. How's that? Hallelujah. Right living. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to stay on the side of love. How's that? Hallelujah. The love of God's been shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit. It's there. Hallelujah. We're going to choose to stay on that side of love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So good. Just cannot act like he's never done anything for me. Amen. Can you act the same way before he came into your life? Absolutely not. So we just, we just have to lift him up and we have to give him praise because he did not leave us where he found us. So thankful for that. So thankful. So grateful. Hallelujah. We're on our way. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo, glory. So glad. So thankful. So thankful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, you may be seated tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. He's so good. So good. So merciful. So good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go with me, if you would, to Psalm chapter 100, if you would. The Lord's just not done with this subject. So it's just like I, I remember my mom. She'd get a grapefruit, slice that in half, and she'd have this little, I don't know, some little, help me out, people that eat fruit, some kind of tool. And you take that grapefruit and you put it on there and you twist that grapefruit because you're going to get all that juice out of that grapefruit, right? I tell you what, that woman was relentless. That, you know, that that grapefruit was not going to have any juice left in it after she was done with it. So that's the way we have to be with the word. If we're supposed to stay somewhere, we need to stay there. We need to squeeze it till we get everything out of it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to stay in this subject of, you know, pastor was talking about, you know, thank, thanksgiving, thankful living, thanks living. 
Well, let's just go right into praise living. How's that? We'll just go right into praise living. And uh, so he uh, ended or close to ended Sunday on this scripture. So we're going to pick up there tonight. But Father, we just thank you for your word. Your word is light to us. We're so thankful and so grateful for it. Hallelujah. It changes us from the inside out and we are better for it. We just thank you that your word is powerful. It is alive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It, it does something that no other book can ever do because this is your word speaking to us. And we're so thankful for it, Lord. We're so thankful for it. And we're so thankful for what you have for us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. So Psalm 100, verse 4. Let's look at it in the King James first. Well, I'm going to start at verse 1. Make a what? Joyful. Make a joyful month. a shout to the Lord. All you land, serve the Lord with gladness. Serve the Lord with gladness. My goodness. Have you ever come across a Christian and they think serving the Lord is hard? I don't get it because right here it says serve the Lord with gladness. Helen, it's a joy to be a child of God. I said it's a joy to be a child of God. It's a joy to be a child of the King. Hallelujah. My goodness. I, when, before I was born again serving the enemy, that was not a joy. That was a hardship. That was a hardship. And when I got born again, it became a joy every day. Hallelujah. It doesn't mean I wasn't met with some trial. Yes, we all are, folks. But it's still a joy to know you're going to heaven. Hallelujah. It's still a joy to know that our names are written down in the Lamb's book of life. Hallelujah. Serve the Lord with gladness. So that also tells us this. If you're not serving the Lord with gladness, make an attitude change. Go ahead and make that correction and make that, a, you know, change your attitude. It's a joy and it's a privilege. Hallelujah. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with, mine says singing, but yes, thanksgiving. Know that the Lord, he is God. He, it is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gate with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. Hallelujah. So how are we to enter? We come into his gates with thanksgiving. And I like the way that the message reads. Enter with the password. Enter with the password. Heaven is password protected. Hallelujah. But he wanted his children to know what it is. Here's the password. It is thank you. You know, I don't know how many times I get asked, you know, if someone wants to get on to our um, internet, our Wi-Fi, they ask, what's the, wi what's the password? And I have to tell you, sometimes I forget what the password is. But he made, God made it so simple for us. He says, enter with the password, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How, we can remember that, folks. We can remember that. What's the password of heaven? It is thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Heaven is password protected. It means this. That it's accessible only to users entering or speaking the correct password. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's accessible only to the user. That means that's a place that not everybody can go. You know, not everybody's going to come. Thank you, Lord. A lot of people will come, I need this, I need that. A lot of prayer petition. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. But let's first enter correctly. There's a right way to enter. Amen. Hallelujah. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Every morning you get up. Thank you, Lord. This is the day you have made. I'm going to rejoice and I'm going to be glad in it. Hallelujah. I'm going to make that choice right now. Right now, I'm going to make that choice because it doesn't matter then what the devil may bring, what kind of, you know, situations may arise. You've already made the choice. And because we're people of our word, we're going to stay with our choice that we made. Make the choice to rejoice. Amen. Make the choice to be thankful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There, there, this is the better way to come. It's the better way to come. Amen. He loves his children, but there's a better way to come. If I can put it this way, this is an honorable way to come. Amen. This is a respectful way to come. He is still the great I am. He's still the creator of all. And he wants us to come to him, but there is a right way. Hallelujah. And that right way is, thank you, Lord. How about this? I just cannot act like you've never done anything for me. I've got to thank you for some things. i got to thank you for some things. i got to thank you for saving me. i got to thank you for healing me. Come on, anybody in the house been healed? Hallelujah. i got to thank you for delivering me. Hallelujah. Anybody been delivered here tonight? Amen. We got some things to be thankful for. We got some things to shout about and thank the Lord for. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Go with me over to Psalms 95, if you would, please. Say, thank you, Lord. You know, we can end here tonight and just be happy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Psalms 95. Oh, well, I'll just start verse 1. Oh, come. Oh, come. Let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with what? There's that password again. There it is again. What's the password of heaven? Thank you. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. If we can come before our Father, then I'm going to tell you something right now, folks. We have so much to be thankful for. Do you hear what I'm saying in that? That means... That we're able to access the throne room because of what Jesus has done. And that should make us so grateful. Because there was a time before we knew Jesus that we could not. But now we can. Praise the Lord. Now we can. Whenever we desire to. Amen. We don't have to like, you know, call up and to the, I don't know, the appointment desk and schedule an appointment. You know, I don't know, Peter or John might be manning that desk, but we don't have to talk to them. Let me check with God and see when he might have time for you. He always has time for us. All we have to do is come before him. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let us come before his presence. His presence. How could you come any other way? <laughs> How could you come any other way than being thankful that you're able to come into his presence. Woo, let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. For the Lord is the great God and the great king above all gods. And his hands are the deep places of the earth. And the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. See, now, there is a way to worship. There is a way to, that we should worship and come before him. Worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Oh, we can praise him. He is our maker. Hallelujah. And we can praise him. That he is our maker, oh my goodness. For he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. 
Hallelujah. 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 The Amplified Classic says this way, Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker in reverent praise and supplication. Reverent praise. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. Hallelujah. Another translation, translation says it this way. Come, let us shout praises to God. Raise the roof for the rock who saved us. Let's march into his presence singing praises, lifting the rafters with our hymns. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We do not have to be a church mouse when it comes to praising God. There is a time to be silent sometimes and to be still, but there is a time to shout, hallelujah, with a voice of victory, giving praise to God, our maker, hallelujah. Who knows you better than your maker? My, 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 hallelujah. He loves you. He cares for you. He is your maker. Hallelujah. Go with me back over to Luke chapter 17. We've been looking at that quite a bit lately. <clears throat> Say, I know the password. And it's thank you. Hallelujah. Please feel free to share the password with everyone. Luke chapter 17 and, of course, this is the story of the ten lepers. Verse 13. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go show yourselves to the priest. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them. That's the one. We want to be like the one. We don't want to be like the nine. We want to be like the one. And the one, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? Ha-ha. <laughs> Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And when he said, and he said to him, Arise, go your way, your faith has made you well or whole. If I can put it this way, there is a bigger flow of men and women that are not being thankful. But how about this? You just go upstream. You just go upstream. It's a lot easier to follow the nine. There was more in that flow. But just because there may, may be more in the flow of murmuring and complaining, that don't mean you go that way. That don't mean you go that direction. That means you go the direction of the word. I said you go the direction of the word. Amen. So just because others might be murmuring, complaining, amen, discouraged, that don't mean that's your direction. This man took a turn. That means he changed that direction. He was with, with the nine. He was going with the nine. But then he turned. Then he turned. And it was with that turn that he knew the password. It was thank you. Hallelujah. Somehow he knew that password. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this man received more because he accessed correctly. He accessed correctly. Now the others could have had the same. 
They could have had the same. But they chose to keep going in the direction they were going. And they failed to access the more. The more. Now understand this. The man did not return back to Jesus to get more. He didn't return to get more. But God is so good <laughs> that when you come into his presence, you're going to get more. Whether you want more or not, because he's just so good. He's an overflow kind of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Being unthankful is really a heart sickness. There's a heart sickness going on among many people. They're not thankful for what they have. I remember seeing something <clears throat> some years ago that said, be thankful for what you have because at one time you were believing God for it. Amen. Be thankful for what we have now because at one time we were believing God for it. Amen. So even if you're believing God for more, don't be unthankful for what you have. Amen. Hallelujah. The others could have received the same thing. But they failed to access. Hallelujah. I remember a minister. Uh, they told the story that they were actually ministering in another church. And when they called up the healing line. This particular minister noticed that a woman in the church uh, service, she stood up and started praising God. Now, she did not um, do it unmannerly or, or, you know, cause attention to come to herself. She just stood up and very reverently started praising God. And so this minister noticed that. And so later on, she um, asked the pastor of the church, why this woman did that. And he goes, whenever God starts moving, when the anointing starts flowing, she has to stand up and give God glory because she was healed at one time. And she never forgot what God has done for her. Amen. Never forget what God has done for you. Don't take it for granted. Amen. See, we start being unthankful when we start taking things for granted. Amen. And so that woman would stand up every time and start giving thanks to God for her healing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praising God for what only God can do is honorable. Praising God for what only he can do is honorable. This happened uh, several years ago. It so happened that pastors were away ministering, and so um, Todd and I ministered that Sunday, and and there was a new couple that came, and some of you might actually remember this. And this was actually their first time, the TFC. And the woman came in either in a wheelchair or with a walker. I don't recall which one. But she had about six very serious ailments. And so she came up for healing, and she was instantly healed with four of them. She could tell in her body she was healed. She walked out pushing either that wheelchair or that walker, whichever one it was. She walked out on her own. God met her miraculously that day. Hallelujah. And because pastors had been, were, were gone and I was the one that ministered to them, um, I went to their home several times. And this woman, again, God met her, I mean, miracle, four miracles in her body. And she could not get 
past the roadblock in her mind of the two that were still there. I would try to get her to praise the Lord and thank him for what he had done for her. And she would go, well, I do thank him, but this still exists. And this still exists. And I could not get her to turn her tongue to start praising the Lord. And she lost her healing. Being unthankful, you'll lose your healing. You want to keep your healing? Praise God every day that you're healed. Thank him. If there was something that you were healed of, thank him for that. I could not get this woman to just say, thank you, Lord, for healing my heart. Thank you, Lord, for healing the edema. I couldn't get her to say it without her putting a but on the end of it. I know that I know that I know she would have been whole had she just thanked and praised the Lord. If she would have continued in that stream, I know God would have met her. Some things we walk out by faith. Amen. But she chose not to walk it out by faith. Why? Because she did not access correctly. When you come into the presence of the Lord and you're so thankful for what he's done, he is now your all in all. You're not thinking about all this other stuff. You're not thinking about what's going on in your body. You're not thinking about what's going on in the world. You're not thinking about all this other. It's just him and me. Intimate worship. Hallelujah. We're not carrying the cares into the throne room. Hallelujah. Because this is about him. Amen. Hallelujah. How sad. That she lost her healing. Back to the, either the walker or the wheelchair. I don't even know if she's still alive today or not. All the medicine she didn't take for a while. Back to all the medicine. Amen. Hallelujah. Why am I saying all this? Because that man received more because he was thankful. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Years ago, God spoke to Norval Hayes and stated this. My children basically love me, but they live in poverty and sickness and defeat. They don't live in heaven's blessings because they don't worship me enough. You're teaching faith and confession. You're praying for the sick, but you need to worship me more. And you need to teach my people to worship me more. I'm their God, and they're my children if you'll teach my children to worship me more, I'll do great. Now listen, I'll do great and mighty things for them. Hallelujah. Now when I say worship, we're not talking about a song. Amen. We're talking about what's flowing out of our heart. Who he is. Who he is to us. Hallelujah. That don't mean there may not, 
There could be some singing, but what I'm talking about worship is not a song. Hallelujah. Again, if you'll teach my children or worship me more, I'll do great and mighty things for them. Because you cannot get into his presence and leave with less. Amen? You're going to leave with more. <laughs> You're not going to leave with less. You're not going to leave with less joy. You're going to have more joy. In his presence is fullness of joy. Amen. How can you walk away sicker? You're not. Hallelujah. How can, you're not going to leave more depressed. You're going to leave free. Hallelujah. You're going to leave with more. Hallelujah. That thing you've been fretting over, there's the answer. There it is. Right there in his presence all along. Clarity comes. It's no wonder the enemy does not want us to access the throne room. Because that's the place. Oh, my, my, my. That's where our peace, our joy, our answers. Hallelujah. Go with me to Acts chapter 13, if you would. Is this okay tonight? Praise living. Thanks living and praise living. You know, people talk about, you know, living a spirit-filled life. Being thankful and being a praiser is a, being a spirit-filled life. That's living a spirit-filled life. Being thankful, being a praiser. Amen. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 13. Verse 2. And they what to the Lord? They ministered to the Lord. And fasted. And the Holy Spirit spoke. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Kenneth E. Hagin, Brother Hagin, Dad Hagin, said that most church services are ministering to one another. He said we sing, but very few songs do we minister to the Lord. The minister speaks, but he's ministering to the people. And when we pray, it's usually the prayer of petition. Asking God to move or to manifest in our midst or among us or to meet the needs. And if we do wait on God, then it's usually in regard to prayers of petitions. He goes on to say this, that we need more services of waiting on God and ministering to the Lord. It's important to do this individually, but it's also important to do this collectively. He goes on to say this, I'm sure of this. We miss a lot of what God has for us because we don't take time to get into an attitude of worship and minister to the Lord. I'll say that again. He said, I'm sure of this. We miss a lot of what God has for us because we don't take time to get into an attitude of worship and minister to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go with me to Acts chapter 16. And this is the story of Paul and Silas. We'll start on verse 23. This is the Amplified Classic. 
And when they had struck them with many blows, they threw them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. He, having received so strict a charge, put them in the inner prison, the dungeon, and fastened their feet in stocks. But about midnight, as Paul and Silas were praying and singing psalms of praise to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them, suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the very foundations of the prison were shaken, and at once all the doors were opened and everyone's shackles were unfastened. So again, I don't think they were singing songs of pity. They prayed and they sang. They ministered to the Lord. Hallelujah. They, they didn't sing some contemporary top 40 song. They didn't sing some 80s rock and roll hair nation song. They didn't go back to the 40s or 50s and sing an Elvis song. They ministered unto the Lord. That's who they ministered to. They had their worship be all about him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, many people would be complaining if, if they were in Paul and Silas's shoes. They would have for sure been going, well, we know we miss God. We must have taken a wrong turn somewhere. We must not have heard accurately. The Holy Ghost must have spoke wrong. Because it said they were beat. When they had struck them with many blows. And then threw them into the innermost part of the prison. The waste of the, of the city flowed through there. Not a pleasant place to be. But here's the, here's the thing. Many would be complaining, but they prayed and they praised. Look at their attitude. Look at their attitude of what they did when they were faced with a hardship. When they were faced with with you know, I'm sure discouraging circumstances. They prayed and they praised, or we can say they ministered to the Lord. They weren't even thinking about themselves. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our praise is the start of our testimony. Hallelujah. People want the testimony, but they don't want the test. Well, get through the test and just start with praise. That is the start of your testimony. Hallelujah. Praise is the evidence of knowing who God is. You know, Silas could have been going, I know, I, I you know, because, you know, he just recently joined Paul. <laughs> You know, he's thinking, my goodness gracious, I joined the wrong one. I should have went with the other group. But he didn't. He stayed with the right attitude. You know he had to be watching Paul. You know that. And it's like Paul prayed. He's like, I'm going to enter into pr prayer. And then when Paul started to praise, he's like, I'm going to enter into praise. Hallelujah, but too many times somebody, you know, maybe a brother and sister in the Lord, they might be going through something, and instead of us lifting them up, we come down with them. Hallelujah, if you know somebody's hurting in the body of Christ, go to them and be like Paul and Silas, pray and praise. Hallelujah, it's milk and cookies. Come on. Apple pie and ice cream, you don't have one without the other. You pray and then go on into praise. Hallelujah. You 
You know the difference between someone who praises and someone who does not? The difference is one knows who their God is. A praiser, and I'm not talking about a song, and I'm not talking about what you do in this church. I'm talking about when you get that unexpected bill, what do you do? When you get that call in the middle of the night, what do you do? When that symptom pops up, what do you do? Hallelujah. Praise is the evidence of knowing who your God is. Hallelujah. Thanks be unto God. Which always causes us to triumph. Hallelujah. When you know that. When you know that he'll cause you to always triumph in Christ Jesus. Whoo, you can put a shout in your mouth. Hallelujah. There's no discouragement there when you know that. Always causes us to triumph. Not 80-20, not 70-30. It's 100%. Hallelujah. Because it's based on Jesus Christ and he won, folks. Hallelujah. And we're in him and we won. Hallelujah. We're more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. Praise is the evidence of knowing who your God is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalms 34 1. If you want to go over there, you can. Psalms 34, verse 1. Instructs us. This is instruction right here. I will bless the Lord. At I felt that all kind of <laughs> kind of I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise, not the workings of the devil, not the goings on about the devil. His praise, what he's done, hallelujah, shall continually, if your mouth is so full, how can you get or allow that doubt and unbelief to get in there? If it's so full of the praises of God, so again, so if we start noticing our speech is wrong, then we're not keeping our mouth full. Because if it's full, come on, y'all, y'all bought, we just had Thanksgiving. Y'all had some full mouths, right? Amen, me too. You can't get anything else in. Amen. So if something's coming out, then you know you're filling up on the wrong thing because your mouth should be full of praise. I will bless the Lord at all times. No matter the circumstance, no matter the condition, no matter the situation. A praiser knows his God. And a praiser knows God is faithful to his word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I bless the Lord at all times. Well, my kids are doing that. Well, it's all right. Bless the Lord at all times. Well, this is going on at my work. Well, okay. That's all right, honey. You just go ahead and bless the Lord at all times. Hallelujah. Just complaining about stuff's going to keep that, just that flow going. Change that into this flow. I'm going to bless the Lord at all times. It doesn't matter what's all going on. How about this? We can choose to be thankful for our jobs. Make that, make that correction. Make that turn and be thankful. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. That's a choice. That's a decision. That's a decision. It doesn't matter what things look like. 
And frankly, it doesn't matter how we feel. Amen. Circumstances don't dictate our praise. Our decision does. Hallelujah. And if we praise in those times, we'll change that situation. Amen. We'll change that situation. Amen. If a, if a symptom comes, I'm going to start thanking God that he is Jehovah Rapha. Amen. I'm going to praise him that he is my healer. I'm not going to go to WebMD and waste my time doing that when my time can be better spent in praise. You notice that the shackles came off of everyone. Hallelujah. Do not let the enemy make you think your praise is for nothing. It can affect people around you. It can affect your family. It can affect a city. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But we need to practice having his praise be in our mouths continually. Did you hear the word practice? Hallelujah. Because it's not going to just happen on its own. We've got to practice that. We have to practice that. Amen. And you know one thing? Most people don't want to practice. If it doesn't come naturally, they don't want to have anything to do with it. Isn't that right? Because what? It's a little tough. But if you keep at it, folks, if you keep at it, just keep at it, it's going to come more natural. It's going to come more natural. Hallelujah. Next thing you know, you're doing it all the time. And it is, that is now your lifestyle. That is now your lifestyle. Hallelujah. You, you know, a lifestyle comes by practicing something for a length of time. Hallelujah. You know, if you live a healthy lifestyle or a lifestyle of working out, I doubt if you just stepped right into it, doing exactly what you're doing, like maybe two years into it. Does that make sense? You're not going to be doing as many sets, as many reps. Your weights are going to be lower, but you start somewhere. And then what do you do? You go and you work out every day. Hallelujah. Make that commitment. How about this? Let's make that commitment to keep his praise in our mouths continually. Amen. Hallelujah. We have to practice a lifestyle of praising God. Circumstances are nothing to God. God laughs at impossibilities because there's no impossibilities in him. There's no such thing that exists in him. He doesn't mind challenges because he's the victor. He knows it. All of heaven knows it. The devil knows it. And every demon knows it. Hallelujah. And we know it. We know it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Again, Paul and Silas, they didn't let the jail part get into him. They were enslaved to Christ. They weren't going to let go of what they knew because of the situation around them. They knew God. They knew God. They spent time with God. They, they ministered to him. They accessed the throne room. Hallelujah. That's why they were able to do what they did. Because, folks, if you allow circumstances to dictate your praise... You'll be praising about every quarter, every half year, 
maybe annually. Amen. And coming on a Sunday morning is great to praise. But keep following it up daily, 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 daily. Remember, a lifestyle is daily. It's not hit or miss. That's a hobby. Praise is not our hobby. It is our lifestyle. Thanksgiving is not our hobby. It is a lifestyle. Amen. And we're going to stop there tonight. Smith Wigglesworth said this, that when he wakes up, he jumps out of bed. <laughs> he jumps out of bed. He doesn't just drag himself out of bed. He jumps and he says, praise the Lord. What an awesome way to start the day. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Stand to your feet tonight and let's just give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. Praise him for who he is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise you because you are so good. You are a great and mighty God. You are Jehovah Jireh. Hallelujah. So good. So good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise and glory and honor. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. You're so worthy. We honor you. You're so worthy. You're so good, so loving, so kind, so generous, so merciful. Hallelujah. It's a joy and it's, it's just an honor to be in your presence. Thank you. Thank you for sending your dear son Jesus for us. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done for us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for coming and making your home in us. We're so thankful, so grateful. Hallelujah. So wonderful, Lord. So beautiful. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So wonderful. Hallelujah. You're so wonderful. You're so good and your mercy endures forever. You're strong and you're mighty. All power. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So good. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because of who you are, we give you praise. Because of who you are, we give you honor. Because of who you are, we, my goodness, give you glory. Hallelujah. And because you're so great, Lord, we have to greatly praise you. You deserve much praise. Hallelujah.
there is none like you, Lord. None like you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Thank 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 you, Lord. the same attitude of praise. Let's worship the Lord with our giving this evening. Hallelujah. We magnify you. Hallelujah. We lift you up. If you need a seed book tonight, just raise your hand and an usher will get one into your hands. Hallelujah. Part of a spirit-filled life is being a giver. Giver life. Hallelujah. Practice being in his presence as much as you can. Hallelujah. Part of the victory life is the praise life. Having a victory-filled life is being a praiser. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lift up your offerings to the Lord tonight. Worship him with your giving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, that you're so faithful to provide seed to the sower. Hallelujah. And that's with a grateful heart that we sow tonight. We trust in you. Our finances, we put our trust in you. Hallelujah. We put our trust in the heavenly system and not in the earthly system. Hallelujah. It's a joy to serve you, Lord. So that also means it's a joy to give. We are joyful givers. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead, ushers. Hallelujah. Joyfully sow your seeds into the ground. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. What's the password? Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We have so much to be thankful for. So much. Go ahead and stand to your feet again. 
just go ahead and just thank him again. He's just so good. We cannot ever thank him enough. We can't ever thank him enough. Hallelujah. We praise and we give you glory, Lord. You are so good and your mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. We thank you that your goodness follows us. Glory, glory, glory. Chasing us down. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your provision. We thank you that, that we have heard what we need to hear tonight. We thank you for your word, that it is changing us. We won't leave here the way that we came. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. 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 Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. It is a good thing to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Woo. And give thanks unto our Lord. It is a good thing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's just go ahead and thank him right now that we're healed. Can we do that? Hallelujah. Just lay a hand on your, on your body and just thank you. Call it healed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I call you healed from the top of your head to the soles of your feet in Jesus' name. Our bodies are blood blessed. I said they're blood blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Disease germs must die. Hallelujah. It cannot attach itself. Because the blood DNA is in us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if a disease germ, if we come into contact with it, it must die in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We're not playing around with it. It just must die in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The anointing's working in our body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise you for it, Lord. And again, thank you for it, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you for the blood, the precious blood of Jesus. Thank you for the blood. Make much to do about the blood, and the blood will make much to do about you. Hallelujah. 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 Covered by the blood. Covered by the blood. Covered by the blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I tell you what, you may not see yourself covered, but the enemy sees that, and he cannot cross the bloodline. So make sure you're confessing the blood over yourself. Hallelujah. Over your pastors. Hallelujah. Over the church. Glory over your children and your family. Hallelujah. The devil does not mess around with the blood. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your blood. Thank you, Lord, for your blood. Hallelujah. Thank you for your blood. There are some that say that churches like us are grotesque because we talk about the blood. The blood is the most beautiful thing. The most beautiful flow, the fountain that flowed out of him is the most beautiful thing. And it's the most powerful And we're going to continue to talk about it, to sing about it, to thank him for it. Hallelujah for his blood. Hallelujah. It is not grotesque. It's beautiful. Hallelujah. So thankful for the blood. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, let's go out of here tonight rejoicing. You can go out of here leaping and praising God if you want. Hallelujah. But let's continue to practice the presence of the Lord and to practice keeping his praise in our mouth. Amen.